Ball State Sports Link's third down chirp is delivered by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Visit PapaJohns.com today for more info. Welcome back to another great edition of Third Down Chirp, delivered by Papa John's. I'm your host, Luke Martin, alongside Zach Hughes, Tyler Bradfield, fellas. The Cardinals, week two, another game against Army, and another pass test. And I know the coaching staff here at Ball State is glad Army week is over with. I don't think the Cardinals could have imagined a better start than this. They set a couple records. You're sitting at 2-0. and It's definitely a good time to be a Cardinal. You know, Army's such an odd team to prepare for in their offense and their defense. You almost have to set that week aside, as Coach Limbo said in the postgame press conference. Whether it's week nine, whether it's week two, but they got the win. They're now 2-0 and on the season. And now that next test will be North Texas, but we got we got to hold on. We got to recap this Army game first. So let's do that by going through our opening drive with our three main headlines. Zach, what stood out about that win against Army to you right here at Schumann State? It's the high-powered offense that, that we've seen for the first two weeks of the season. 91 points they've scored. That's a record for the first two games for this program. They're 14 of 14 in the red zone, 100%, 11 touchdowns out of those 14 possessions, and winning. He's one of five FBS quarterbacks who have thrown 60-plus passes without an interception. So this offense, very high-powered. They, they've set a record. It, it's looking good to be an offensive player on this team. Well, it stood out to me with special teams because they accounted for 16 points in that win over Army. You know, Scott Secor is 4 of 4 on extra points. He was 4 of 4 on field goals. He hit from 47. He hit from 34. He hit from 20 yards out twice. Also, Kyle Schmidt, how about the job he's done? Six punts total this year. He's had three that he's pinned inside of the 20. He's also had three uh, 50 plus yards when he hasn't pinned it inside of the 20. Also the, the fumble on the kick return, uh, that was huge for Ball State. They end up getting points off of that. So to me, it was special teams as to why they won. And mine is a combination of both of your guys. It's that next man up. You hear Coach Limbo talk about it all the time. When someone goes down, the next man has got to step up. And Jonathan Newsom, Juwan Edwards, yeah, those are big names. And they were out against Army, but Michael Ayers stepped up for Jonathan Newsom. And you had Teddy Williamson and Horatio Banks step up for the running game as they both combined for 120 yards and two touchdowns. And like I mentioned, Michael Ayers, he was the second leading tackler on the day with eight total tackles. Three were all by himself, and a big reason why Michael had a big game was they held Army to the fewest amount of rushing yards in their three total games in the limbo era against Ball State. So a great job by that Ball State defense and being Michael, Michael Ayers, being that next man up for this Ball State football team. Well, let's recap that game against the Army Black Knights with our Sounds of the Game segment as we hear Oh, familiar voice with his highlights. It's Tyler Bradfield <laughs> with his radio calls from 91.3 WCRD Ball State Sports Link Radio as we relive that win for Ball State over the Army Black Knights. Welcome inside Schumann Stadium as the Ball State Cardinals will try to do something today that they haven't done since 2008, and that is start a college football season 2-0. Larry Dixon will get it off of the back door to the 40. He's across midfield with no one to beat to the 30. Look at him go to the 20. Being chased down from behind by Eric Patterson all the way to the goal line. And Larry Dixon will take it almost 80 yards for a touchdown. The tight end to his left. Only wide receivers are set to the right side. That's Jamil Smith and Willie Sneed. Here's the snap. A handoff in the backfield to Horatio Banks to the five. Banks is going into the goal line, and Banks will score for the Ball State Cardinals. The Cardinals have struck back against the Army Black Knights, under 11 to play in the first quarter. There are four down linemen for Army. Here's the snap. It's back to Keith Winning. He throws to the end zone. Jamil Smith cutting across the back of the end zone. He dives, and he brings it in for a ball State touchdown. They take the lead 13 to 7. 
So here's the snap, it's back, the hold is down, the kick is on the way, it's got the distance, doesn't have the accuracy, it looks like it does, it is 37 yards out, Scott Seco will knock it through. Three backs to the backfield as Angel Santiago takes the snap on the left half, pulls away and drops in the backfield, Nathan Ollie got up for a sack, Angel Santiago saw a hole and Nathan Ollie said, no sir, dropped him right in the backfield. Here's the snap. He fakes the handoff to Jamil Smith. He's going to throw to the end zone as Zane Fake curling around as Zane Fake brings it in over the shoulder. And right there, the Ball State Cardinals extend the lead once again. It's 36-7 over the Army Black Knights. Secor will approach the ball with the red jersey, swings his right leg. It's an end over end kick traveling to the left side, and this one will be let go at the one-yard line and picked up off a hop by Stephen Fraser to the 10. And he's knocked backwards. Bumper Ball State recovers! Ball State Cardinals will pick up their second victory in 2013. They start the 2013 season 2-0 for the first time since 2008. Ball State 40, Army 14, the final score. The Cardinals will be back in action next Saturday at the North Texas Mean Green. The Ball State Cardinals victorious against the Army Black Knights, as you see on the screen, 40 to 14. Third straight win for Ball State against the Army Black Knights after losing the first two in the series. So they now lead the series three to two overall. Coach Limbo talked about it would be a dream if you would have told him that Ball State would win their first three matchups against the Army Black Knights. And as Zach mentioned, look at that offensive firepower there on the screen. Keith winning 23 of 32, 325 yards and two touchdowns. But let's talk to the head coach Pete Limbo and here was his comments on how how much he was impressed by his Ball State football team and their victory Saturday afternoon. We walked away from Saturday feeling good about the win but still uh, being very realistic about where we're at and I, I feel like our guys have uh, uh, remained very grounded and uh, I like I like the, the, the demeanor I'm seeing here so far this week. We are excited to go on the road. Uh, and, and I don't mean that in a way that takes away from what I think have been two excellent crowds at our home games, great atmospheres. Um, people are excited about football in this community right now, and that's all good. Uh, you play half your games on the road. You better embrace going on the road. You better enjoy going on the road. You better look forward to those challenges. And uh, that's a big part of the culture in our program. Zach and Tyler, you just heard Coach Limbo's comments. He was very impressed. He's glad Army Week is over. He talks about how they're so tough to plan for, and it was a big win for Ball State. It definitely was, and they definitely are hard to plan for. He talked about in the post game presser after the game. He kind of wants to put it in the past and forget it because he doesn't really know where his team is. Yeah, they've set some records on the offensive side, but they played a team that is unlike all the other teams they'll face. But it was a big win, and it's good to see him 2 0. Whether you're playing Week 9, whether you're playing Week 2, you got to set it aside and you got to prep for him. But the team you also have to prep for is North Texas. And, and Tyler just mentioned that North Texas Mean Green, and that is the next game for Ball State. Well, you know what time it is. It's time to meet the Mean Green in North Texas, just in case you don't know where they're at, of course. They're in the state of Texas. They're from Denton, Texas, which is just outside of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Maybe you know this guy, Mean Joe Green, the NFL Hall of Famer. He played for North Texas. He is one of their most famous alums. But here's the interesting thing. The last time these two teams played, North Texas won, and where was that at? Oh, yeah, it was right here where we're at for this show, right here at Schumann Stadium, which was the first year under Stan Parrish after the 2008 season. Guys, we heard Coach Limbo earlier talking about Army being a tough test. This will be a tough test as well, so there's got to be a Ball State X Factor. It's got to stand out against the Mean Green. Zach, who is it for you? Well, my X Factor, I talked about how the offense has kind of been unstoppable to this point, but they're not – they're not impossible to stop because they only have 10 rushing first downs out of, and they have 33 passing. So my X factor is Jordan Hansel on the offensive line. At some point in this season, they're going to need to rely on that rushing attack, and I don't know if they feel comfortable with that yet. If it's a fourth and one and they need to power it in for a touchdown, do they feel comfortable giving the ball to Juwan Edwards when he's healthy or Horatio Bank and punching it in? 
I think the offensive line needs to step up, and I think the rushing attack needs to get going a little bit. Not only does Jordan Hansel have to be instrumental in the rushing attack, but so does the running back that's carrying it. We don't know if we're going to see Juwan Edwards because he's still questionable with that injury. Uh, he did miss last week against Army Luke, but Horatio Banks stepped in. He had 17 carries, 51 yards, two touchdowns. If he can have a big game, maybe rush for 100 plus yards, this Ball State offense hard to stop. You guys are going offense. I'm going to go defense. North Texas, what do they do? They throw the football. They're a very good throwing team. That's why I'm going in the secondary. I'm going to go Eric Patterson. I think he is going to be a key guy to watch for this Ball State secondary. They haven't really been tested much this this year. Illinois State testing them week one. Last week against Army, you know they're going to run the football. This week, you're going to be tested if you're in that Ball State secondary. Martez, Hester, all of those guys, they got to be ready for this North Texas team because it is going to be one tough task. Well, that's enough for us talking about North <laughs> Texas. We don't get paid to scout North Texas. Let's talk to the guys that do get paid to scout this Mean Green football team, and that is our coordinators here at Ball State. With our third down chirp scouting report, we talk to offensive coordinator Rich Skrosky and defensive coordinator Jay Bateman. You know, they really are impressive on film. It's Coach, and we, we have some familiarity with their staff. They're going into their third year as well. And I think if you look at their depth chart, and we, we did it today with the quarterbacks, it goes like this. Senior, 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 junior, junior, senior, 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 junior, senior, one sophomore start. So it tells you they're in their third year. Uh, they're a pretty basic scheme. You know, they're a four-down team, play quarters coverage, uh, have some change-ups to it. But the fundamentals of how their coach is awesome. You know, they, you're not going to get a cheap one on them. Ohio hit one on the first play of the game, but it was just a kind of a jump ball situation, and you know the corner missed, missed time this jump. So the biggest thing I would say about uh, this team is you're not going to get a cheap one. They, they, you're not going to fool them. You know, you got to win with fundamentals, and uh, you know, hopefully we got some big plays in, in regard to getting some one-on-one -on -one situations, and you know, break a tackle here, or uh, you know, separate on a route somewhere else. But uh, they're doing a good job, and I like the way their kids play. Yeah, I think number three, the receiver, um, is a really talented kid. He's really fast. He got hurt last year, missed a big chunk of the season. I think it really hurt him because he's a dynamic kid, and he's a kid that you throw a screen to, it could be seven points. You know, So we've got to know where he is. I think the O-line is veteran. They're physical. Um, they, 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 they attack you. They knock you off the ball, and I think that's going to be a challenge for our guys. And I think at running back, they've got three guys, and it's like every time I cut it on, I'm like, yeah, what, which one's that? What's that kid's name? Because they're all three really talented. They're all about to say like 5'10", 220, physical, fast. And yeah, we got to really do a great job tackling them. So I think we do all that, find out where number three is and limit his big plays, we'll be all right. That was a third down trip scanner report. Huge thanks to Coach Rich Skrowski and Coach Jay Bateman for going along with it, our defense and offensive coordinator. As the wind is picking up here at Schumann Stadium, uh, for the first time ever here on Third Down Chirp, we're actually joined by someone that knows how to talk football, and that is none other than the quarterback, Keith Winning. Keith, thank you so much for taking time to join Third Down Chirp tonight. We definitely appreciate it. But so far, a great start for you and your football team. Yeah, we, we made an emphasis to come out in the first three games of the year and you know try to start off strong, and you know, we feel like you know, that's just going to add momentum to our season. And for you, being a senior this year, What's the biggest difference from Keith winning the past couple years when you came in as a freshman, maybe you just as a junior last year, to Keith winning now? You know, besides the football aspect stuff, um, you know, getting better on the field, trying to, you know, develop my leadership skills more on the field, trying to be a better teammate, um, you know, stuff that, you know, fans may not be able to see, you guys may not be able to see, more locker room kind of stuff. So, you know, being, being a captain, you kind of, uh, you know, take that role on, um, but that's that's just more of the stuff besides the football aspect of stuff that I'm trying to get better at. I know this is a question you get asked a lot because you had that knee surgery before the season, but it seems like you're better than ever. We were chatting before we came on. The knee is holding up pretty good, and so far you're having a great year. You know, it does feel great. Um, you know, it was better than I expected. It was it was good in the during camp and you know into the season. It's better than it was before. So you know, I'm just thankful for for our training staff and you know our doctors. And now through the first two weeks of the season, what has impressed you most from watching the offensive tape and the team so far that you've been able to perform about 91 points up on the board through the first two weeks? You know, we're making some plays. Um, offensively, you know, Coach Skrowski's given us great opportunities to, you know, produce um, offensive line, our skill positions, they're, uh, you know, they're doing some good things. Um, you know, we're making, making plays when they present themselves and our defense is getting us the ball. So that's, 
that's a big thing is just offense and defense working together. Hey, Keith, before we let you go this weekend, you're going down to Denton, Texas, to play North Texas, first road trip of the year. You're used to going on these road trips. What can you do to get the young guys prepared for their first road trip, for their first college experience going on the road into what will be a tough environment down there in Texas? Something Coach Lumba always says is, you know, you got to know what we're going down there for. We're going down there for a reason. Um, you know, he says treat it like a business trip. So, you know, when we go down there, we're going to go down there with the mindset of winning a, a football game. That was Keith Wayne, the quarterback of the Ball State Cardinals. Keith, thank you so much for coming on Third Down Chirp this evening. No problem, thank you. That does it for Keith Winning, but hey, we still got more coming up here on Third Down Chirp as we go into our Papa John Slice of Life segment as we talk to Chris Calloway, who also made some plays on the Ball State defense this week. We will be right back right after this with Chris Calloway. Christopher Callaway from Palmetto, Florida, um, number 21. I play outside linebacker. I would say my highlight was um, probably college, man. I mean, it, it, was, it was just a different ball game up here, man. It's, it's a lot more exciting, you know, always watching it while I was younger, always wanting to make it here, you know what I mean? So, and this, I'm actually living it, so this it's, is definitely the highlight. Ball State, I mean, uh, everybody, you know, kind of wondered why I came so far from home, being from Florida, but, uh, I came up here, man, you know, Ball State just opened their arms to me. You know, the coaches, uh, they seemed like nice guys from the beginning, took an official visit here. The players, you know, I kind of related with those guys early and I just felt, it just felt good, man. You know, we bonded, you know, got a good chemistry early and I just, I just felt like this is where I needed to be. It's been a lot of fun, man. Uh, the only thing I'm still trying to get used to is this weather. You know, I don't, the, in, in the winters, man, it, it gets crazy. It's okay to walk around, man, but I'm still trying to get used to play, to play in it. All the coaches, honestly. I mean, even if it's just walking through the hallways, man, they're always, you know, they, they speak to everybody. You know, hey, what's up, Callaway? How's your day going? You know, I mean, it's they don't single out anybody. I mean, but if I had to pick one coach, um, I'd probably say my position coach, man. You know, he's just like, you know, being so far away from home, he's just kind of like a father figure, you know, being up here and just make sure we're doing everything and staying on the right track and staying out of trouble. We helped uh, some a lot of freshmen move in today, and a lot of them had on Ball State football shirts. So that, I mean, if that says anything, I mean, they're just getting here and they're already rocking out the you know the Ball State football gear. Then it seems like they're excited about it. Huge thanks to Chris Calloway for sitting down for a Papa John slice of life segment. All right, boys, are you ready for the final drive to make some predictions again? We I all tied we last week. We got to get some separation. This <laughs> <laughs> we are deadlocked through the first two weeks of the season. So let's go ahead and get it going with our first game on the docket this week in Matt Country. It's a big game. It's Bowling Green. The Falcons, they're undefeated. They're 2-0. They're coming off a big win against their rival, Kent State. Do they get another big win against the in-state Indiana Hoosiers, Zach? I think I like Bowling Green in this one. I think it's going to be close, but Indiana really hasn't proven anything to me yet. 444 rushing yards for Navy last week at IU. I like Bowling Green. They beat down Tulsa and Kent State, and I just think they're, they're going to get the win. Until Indiana proves something, I like Bowling Green in this one. You see, Indiana did look good against Indiana State. They looked bad against Navy. Falcons are 2-0. Oh. I've got Bowling Green in this one. And the problem with IU has always been they always have an offense, but if they play anybody that's got somewhat of a pulse with an offense, they cannot stop them. The IU defense is torturous. They are just really not very good. Navy, they were in the red zone every possession they had against IU. I got Bowling Green, and I don't think this will be much of a contest. I think the Falcons go flying high <laughs> and come out with a win. I know people won't like that here in the state of Indiana. But when we look at Eastern Washington at Toledo, the Rockets are 0-2. They're playing number two Eastern Washington. The team has won a national title at that FCS level. Do the Rockets go 0-3, Zach? Remember, this Eastern Washington team is the team that beat number 25 Oregon State on the road earlier this year. Toledo, this is their only home game in their first five games of the season. I think Toledo is going to be 1-4 when we see them here at Schumann Stadium. I have Eastern Washington in this one on the road. I'll differ an opinion, an opinion with you on this one, Zach. You know, they're 0-2, but they played at Florida. They played at Missouri. I think they're battle-tested enough to take care of Eastern Washington. They'll get their first one of the year this week. 
I'm just going off Toledo because they can't go 0-3. I, I just, Toledo 0-3, that doesn't make any sense to me, but it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be, it's not going to be easy. Whoever did Toledo's schedule, I don't think they're going to have to do their <laughs> schedule anymore. That's for certain. Three brutal games to start the year before they go at Central Michigan next week. Marshall at Ohio, another non-conference battle for Ohio. They had to hold on against North Texas last week after they said they would win in a blowout. Thank you, Ohio. <laughs> but how do you think they'll do this week? Will they pull off what would be a good win against Marshall, who's put up a lot of points just like Ball State through the first Well, two you games. mentioned they put up a lot of points, averaging almost 54 points per game in the first two games. I, I like Ohio at home. I picked against them last week, and they proved me wrong, so I'm going to go with the, the Bobcats at home. You see, Marshall is eighth in points scored, and they're also ninth in points allowed. So I think they get the job done at Ohio. I've got Marshall, Luke. I got the thundering herd of Marshall as well. Ohio fans, at least Zach's on your page. <laughs> See if that actually goes into his favor this week. Central Michigan, they got to go cross country. They got to play at UNLV. Always a tricky game. UNLV, I believe, is also looking for their first win. Who, who gets it here? Does Central Michigan represent the MAC well on the road? I like UNLV in this one. They've had a brutal schedule to open. They played at Minnesota in the Big Ten and versus Arizona at home. Central, they barely escaped New Hampshire last week. I, I'm going to go with UNLV at home this week. I think it's close, and I'll differ an opinion with you once again. It's Central Michigan. Go MAC, go Chippewas. This is scary. Luke Martin and Tyler <laughs> Bradfield are on the same page, but I'm going to go with Central Michigan as well. UNLV, it will be a tough test. It will be a close game. I think the Chippewas will chip away at another win. I know, that's kind of cliche, but we're <laughs> going to go with it anyways. All right, enough of those other MAC games. Let's talk about the MAC game of the week, for us at least. It is Ball State. It will travel in North Texas. First road game of the year. Do the Cardinals pass the first road test in a tough environment down there in Denton, Zach? I like Ball State, but this game really scares me. The weather scares me a lot. It's supposed to be 100 degrees during game time down there. And last week, they struggled with the temperature a little bit. Ball State's defense did. But if they want to be ranked this season, which Ball State has the possibility of being ranked, they need to win a game like this, and they need to win it in, in maybe commanding fashion. Although, I think they're barely going to escape this one. It's the first road game of the season. I have them winning 27 to 20. We're going to see a lot of passing in this one. Ball State, 18th in the country in passing. North Texas, 28. It's going to be pass heavy. Therefore, I think it's going to be high scoring. I've got 45-30, the Cardinals over North Texas. Well, I think this is going to be a tough game as well. I think we're all in agreement. Coach Limbo knows this is going to be tough. He mentioned in his post game, he mentioned in his press conference earlier this week, embrace going on the road. Enjoy the environment. Love going on the road. Have fun. You love playing at home, but you gotta love playing on the road as well in a tough environment. This will be close. It may be like Illinois State. They may be losing at the half. They may get out slow, which so far we've seen the first two possessions of the game. Army goes down and scores first possession. Yeah. Illinois State went down the field, scoring their first possession. It may be like that down in Denton. But, fellas, the Cardinals pull it out. I think the Cardinals pass their first road test of the season, and they will win 38-24. Mark it down. 38-24. <laughs> the Cardinals will pull out the win. Well, another guy that pulls out the win for us here on Third Down Chirp is Joe Hernandez. we got to thank Joe for helping us to get Keith winning on the show this week. Joe does an outstanding job over there with Ball State Athletics. But for everybody, to keep up to date with what we're doing, be sure to follow us on Twitter. For all updates in Ball State Sports, follow at BSU Sports Link. And for more Third Down Chirp updates, follow at Third Down Chirp. But if you're not a Twitter person but you love Facebook, just get on Facebook and search Ball State Sports Link and give us a like. For our producers, Alex Seitz and Drew Adamson, what can we say? They do a great <laughs> job week after week putting this show together. We could not get on air without them, or at least not look good on air without them. <laughs> For the guys up here, the true talent of the show, Zach Hughes, Tyler Bradfield, I am Luke Martin saying so long from Schumann Stadium, and we will see you next week.